When it comes to using HF radio in the real world, things can become a lot more challenging than we might think. HF radio is a whole other animal compared to VHF or UHF radios that we might be used to. And despite the benefits that HF radio brings to the table, there are also downsides or obstacles we have to get around. One major series of disadvantages lies within the field of portability. So today, let's get into the nitty-gritty details of some problems you might face when trying to make your HF radio setup a lot more portable. With every radio setup, there are compromises, and one of the biggest compromises all radio operators make is their antenna. And that is also by far the biggest barrier to portability. HF radio antennas, by their very nature, are usually quite large. You aren't going to be screwing in a micro-whip antenna to your HF rig and making any contacts whatsoever. The antennas that function and are resonant at lower frequencies are usually dozens of feet long. This is our main challenge, and spoiler, there isn't really any good solution for this. There are many ways of shortening an HF antenna to function in a more compact space, and we will definitely be talking about that in the future. What I really mean is we want ultra portability. Most ham radio operators are content with something like a long wire antenna or a dipole or an infed half wave antenna. Basically a long piece of wire that gets strung up in a tree or with a mast or something like that. And that's perfectly fine. Obviously this is preferred if we have the time and space for it. But many times we don't have the time or the space for it. And this is where we start to notice that we might be asking too much from our radio systems, or at least for the technology that we have at the moment. We want to be hiking along a trail, take a knee for a second, and get a message out. Or even better, be able to fling up a whip antenna really quickly and get a message out if we are in a less than friendly situation. Unfortunately, when it comes to civilian HF radio, this isn't going to be possible at the moment. But we can get close. And to do that, we must first understand a bit of basic radio theory. At the very simplest level, a transceiver, a radio, capable of transmitting and receiving, needs a few things to work. At the very minimum, we need the radio itself, a power source, an antenna, and some cabling and adapters to connect everything together. Now, HF frequencies are not like the frequencies you might be used to if you have a history with VHF or UHF radio. With high frequencies, despite the somewhat misleading name, the wavelength of transmissions on HF bands is actually quite long. A good rule of thumb is that the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. So what does this mean for us with our antenna? Well, you know that foot-long whip antenna or rubber ducky antenna that you have on your handheld? Yeah, that's not going to work on HF frequencies. Longer wavelength, lower frequency, bigger antenna. In fact, the frequencies or bands that you want to operate on will dictate exactly how long your antenna has to be. For instance, let's take a look at one of the oldest antenna designs in the book, and arguably one of the most efficient ones, the dipole. Dipole antennas are pretty simple, and they are usually the benchmark that people use when comparing new antenna designs. A dipole antenna is nothing more than two strands of wire connected by an insulating connector in the middle, which sometimes includes a ballon or balancing unit to keep the impedance matched across the system. But hold on here, we're getting ahead of ourselves. If we understand a bit about basic radio theory, we know that the length of the dipole legs is dependent on what frequency we want to transmit on. In a perfect world where thermodynamics don't exist, we would all be running full wavelength dipole antennas. This would mean that the antenna is the exact wavelength of whatever wavelength we want. If we wanted to operate on 40 meters, for instance, a full wavelength antenna would be a little over 130 feet, or 40 meters, long in total. However, as hopefully some of you have noticed, full wavelength antennas are almost never used because they lose their efficiency to heat dissipation, pesky laws of thermodynamics and such, and also due to diminishing returns. Using a piece of wire that's longer than half a wavelength doesn't really do much for you. As a result, most people use half wavelength dipoles, which if we're sticking with 40 meters would be a total length of 66 feet. So in our quest to shorten our antennas as much as we can, we can see that the job just got a lot easier. But 66 feet is still quite large. This is perfectly fine for setting up at a base camp for the night, or something like that, but it's not really feasible for taking a quick knee beside a trail to make a transmission. So what can we do to shorten this 66 feet length? Well, one answer is loading coils. The idea of loading coils is pretty simple. We take some of that 66 feet of line, scrunch it up into a tightly wound coil, and by coiling that wire, we are effectively shortening it. But electrically, the wire is still the same length. This can greatly reduce the length of your antenna, especially at lower frequencies when antennas can be quite long. 
Now you might say, why don't you just make the whole antenna a coil? And indeed you technically could. In fact, there are a lot of companies that sell ultra compact antennas like this one that market that very capability. Very thick coils combined with a very short telescopic whip. So all good, right? Well, not really. As you will hear time and time again throughout the radio world, there are a lot of trade-offs with doing this. Generally speaking, the longer your coil, or the larger your coil is in proportion to the rest of the wire, the more inefficient the system is. So with a loaded coil system, we can see that there is a balance that must be maintained. Having a whip that's the right length, and a coil that's also the right size as well. Now all of what I have mentioned is really just describing how resonant antennas work. There are other ways of getting to the same goal. We will be talking about matching transformers and antenna tuners another day. And of course there are other antenna designs too. In-fed half-wave is another popular choice. Vertical half-wave, slopers, jungle antennas, aka quarter-wave ground plane antennas. You get the point, there are a lot of ways of skinning this particular cat. So to recap, if we want to stick with resonant antennas of a dipole-esque design, we can use loading coils and collapsible whips to get us where we want to be. One of the most widely known, and one of the only companies that has taken this idea and commercialized it, is BuddyPole. BuddyPole has been around for a long time, and many of their main products are essentially what are loaded coil dipoles. There are a couple of other companies that also make these, but I only have personal experience with BuddyPole, specifically the Buddy Stick. This is a somewhat new product that they recently came out with that caters to very specific users. This antenna has been extremely popular throughout the Summit on the Air or SOTA crowd and for good reason. For us though, we can take advantage of this loaded dipole design to meet our goals as well. What I have been experimenting with here is pre-assembling the critical parts of the antenna and placing these down inside a backpack. This allows us to get really close to our goal because we can hook up all the wires and have everything pre-connected. Then when we take a five minute break, all we have to do is screw in our vertical element, our collapsible whip, and extend our radial. Now a note about the radial. You might think that this whole system, the tripod and the buddy stick vertical and the loaded coil, that you might think that's all you need. Not so. Stringing out this radial here is required. If you do not string out this radial, you will not make any contacts or even hear anyone at all on most of the lower frequency handbands. That's why I mentioned that the buddy stick is essentially a loaded coil dipole, because this radial is more or less one half of that dipole. That's why technically calling this a counterpoise is not quite right, it's really one of the radials in our dipole system. This radial is why we can't use this system while on the move. You need to have it elevated off the ground. We might be in open terrain and perfectly fine with a super long whip on our back, but trailing 20 feet of wire behind us while we walk is just not possible. And that's why I said we can get close to our goal, but we still have a lot of work and a lot of testing left to do. With this system, you can take off the ruck, set it directly on the ground, extend the radial, and screw on the whip. And now you're deployed. Pre-assembling the buddy pole antenna might seem like it's not worth it, especially considering you're potentially increasing the risk of damaging the system. You might say that pre-assembling part of the buddy pole system is kind of diminishing returns, right? It's a lot of risk for not a lot of gain. It doesn't take that long to screw these pieces together when you get to a site and you can just leave the whole thing uh, together in its, in its carrying case. However, the real benefit to pre-assembling much of the buddy stick system is that you don't have to worry about a lot of small pieces getting lost and you can do this in the dark. Under total blackout conditions, it's not hard to extend the radial and screw on the whip by feel, so that's one major benefit. Is this system a compromise? Yes, absolutely. But does it work? Also, yes. The biggest downside to this system is that it's not really feasible to be used in an invis roll, which is a bummer, but in that case, a regular dipole will work just fine. So let's take a look at what this might look like in an actual backpack setup. So to show more clearly what a complete system might look like, here is a, an example that I've thrown together uh, of mostly what I use. So uh, as we can see here, we have the Buddy Stick Pro uh, basically all the way inside the backpack, pre-assembled. And as we can see, this backpack being longer than your standard assault pack, this is more of a more of a ruck than anything else, we have less of the Buddy Stick sticking out of the top to get caught on stuff. Again, I would not recommend walking around with this hanging out of the top of your backpack uh, unless you're in an area where there are no snag hazards. But trust me, if you're you know a klutz like me, you will you will snag and bump this on stuff. And this is again uh, really a really important part of your system. 
Taking a look at the side of the bag, we can see that we have our telescopic or collapsible antenna here, of course, uh, ready to go at a moment's notice. And we also have threaded through the inside of the bag. Since this buddy stick is uh, pushed all the way down inside the bag here, the actual radial here is in this pocket. So I poked a small hole through the uh, Everly stock bag here to the inside uh, in a place where it's not going to fray too bad and threaded this through to the inside so that you now have your radial quick and easy to get to. So all you have to do in the middle of the night, in the dark where you're working with light discipline, you can get to this by feel and you can stretch it out uh, by feel. So you don't need to, to have a super great motor skills to do that, which is always handy. So you can tighten that back up to make sure it doesn't fall out. You could also put it in a pouch or whatnot. It doesn't really matter too much. So taking a look at the top of the bag here, we can unzip this to find our IC705 nestled uh, very nicely in there. We could add padding if we wanted to. We could put some padding or clothing behind that, wh whatever you wanted to do for that. I find that this works really, really well just as is, but if you're super concerned about your radio getting damaged, obviously make sure that you take care of that uh, before anything else, because this is a very, very expensive system, right? Uh, all the cabling is routed down inside the bag using multiple holes uh, for routing cables, which is very, very handy. And we can take advantage of a small admin pouch on the top here to hold our antenna analyzer and some extra batteries for various stuff, either the ICOM IC705 or an extra tablet battery, which uh, we can talk about uh, in a later video. Up here up top, we can uh, unzip the top of the bag here to reveal a solar panel. On the inside, it fits very nicely on top of there. And as you can see, kind of peeking out there from the main part of the bag, we have an entire laptop. So if you wanted to bring with you an entire laptop, you could do that. Uh, I tend to not go very far with these because they're super heavy and you get a lot of the same capabilities with a smaller Windows tablet. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this will fit with this entire system. From inside here, I went with a smaller battery just to save weight uh, and to save a little bit of space, but we've got our coax here just in case we want to run a uh, dipole of some kind. Um, moving down inside the bag here, I don't know if you can see it very clearly or not, but we have a sleeping bag mat. We've got some food and other kinds of sundries that you might need out on the trail for a couple of days of operating. And we have our uh, dipole down here at the bottom. And as we can see, peeking out here from the side, the rest of our system. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not very clearly, but the Versa hub doesn't actually go all the way to the bottom of the bag. I have my tent right here. So this adds another layer of protection for this somewhat or comparatively delicate coaxial connection right here, uh, as well as we're wanting to make sure that we keep things uh, impact resistant because, because again, we want to make sure that we have some kind of impact protection for setting this thing on the ground, making sure we get a nice uh, level platform to work from. And this works out really well. Any tent will work, but uh, yeah, uh, you can get this Versa Hub further down inside the bag, obviously, if you were to push it down further, but I find that this works really, really well. And the amount of space you'd gain by uh, putting this further down inside the bag is not worth it, in my opinion, uh, because then you're, exper you're, you're exposing a very critical part of your system to impacts from the ground. So again, this takes into account some of the fragility of some of these radio antenna systems. And again, we can see our uh, green radial wire here going all the way up through here, out through the corner there, and back down to the outside pocket. So all in all, this is a pretty complete system. Uh, you don't really need much more uh, any, anything else uh, for, for operating uh, out in the woods for at least a couple of days. Obviously, this pack is you know just one of many that you can use, and obviously we can put molly pouches on the side and uh, on the front here to hold various items of clothing, food, you name it, all the kind of general stuff you'd need out in the woods, right? So yeah, I thought that might be a helpful way to kind of visualize how this system comes together. So hopefully this was helpful in understanding some of the challenges we face when trying to be ultra portable with our systems. There is no one answer to any of this stuff. In fact, there are so many answers that it's oftentimes overwhelming. A lot of people would probably prefer to just be told, go out and buy this or that. I know I myself would prefer that as it's much simpler. But unfortunately, that's not how it works in the radio world, and your own needs will dictate which radically divergent path you will take. So thanks again for watching, everyone, and we will be on to the next one soon. And as always, fight in the shade.